Hello, everyone. Welcome to season three. Yes, season three. I cannot believe it. I made it this far. One, you probably noticed something very interesting. One, I got a new background. No, actually, yes. Uh, today is the best episode because, because I am talking to one of my close personal friends, Jessica Cruz, who I've known for the past four and a half years. I am. <laughs> yes. It's been a while since we talked to so well not necessarily. But, but yeah, it's been a while More since like we... face to like well yeah. that I can face see to face. face. It's been yeah. a while. Yeah. It's been a while this year. The last time we actually spoke to each other was probably last year. I I remember it was last year. It was our friend Clovis's uh uh benefit thing for yeah, benefit not Katja, but benefit night for That for, was that long. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Why do I feel like I saw you before? The, oh, man. Okay, never mind. Go on. Well, one, you probably, if you did see me, I, I, well, I was working in Manhattan over the summer last summer with my job. So even if you did see me, I probably would have been like very, you know, hey, I can't really talk. You know, I'm working on my job. You know, mm. I, I'd be a, very, a little busy bee in terms of my job. But yeah. Uh, yeah, the last time we spoke to each other was like literally last March or so. Like, not this past March, but like last year March, which feels like five years ago already. But Jesus. I know. <laughs> it, it's been a year. It's been a long time. It's been a, uh, but yeah, the last time we actually spoke to each other face to face was essentially our friend Clovis's, uh, bene uh, not benefit, no, uh, yeah, benefit uh, event. Bloom, I think it was called. Or yeah. Called yeah, Bloom. And yeah, we were essentially just catching up, and then I was hoping to catch, uh, catch up with Jessica maybe down the line over the year because, uh, you know, the thing about theater, you know, the theater is literally a small world anyway. So it's like the people who you know in theater, chances are they may know someone who you know. So it's like, it's a, like theater is literally. It's a small world, like literally, because mm -hmm. people who you know in theater might be someone who, they, who, when your friends knows, who another friend knows. It's like it's it's weird how that works out, especially, and not only that, we both went to the same community college again, the MCC, you know, fifty seven percent, and and but yeah, but that but, but we're not talking about my friendship right here. We're talking. <laughs> We're talking about how the hell did you get into acting? Because um, oh, sorry, my partner gave me a time. You're the best. I love you. <laughs> um, he made me a peanut butter jelly sandwich. Sorry, and I'm sorry. Uh, um. Anyways, question was, how did I get into? Yes, acting or performing arts in general. Um. So. Um, I picked up acting in high school. I used to do a lot of shows when I was younger um, in elementary school, so I would do a lot of musicals and plays. I was mainly a dancer. Uh, that's what I thought what my profession was supposed to be, but that changed over time. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I picked it up in high school, and then I realized like this is something that I want to do. I definitely had a different perspective or approach to it, um, and then I decided to go into the MCC, um, still under that mentality where I didn't have the best approach to what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, so I took uh, about a year break, I believe so. And there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of indecisiveness about it. Like I was so close to being an accountant. <laughs> like, like my mom was like, you get at math, be an accountant. Um, and I followed that, but it was the first day of class. I was just like, okay, I do not want to do this. Um, and then I decided to go back into acting. And I, I think from taking a break um, and also uh, focusing more on my mental illness, I, that's when I like truly started to take it a lot more seriously and taking myself more seriously. Um, so college was a great way sorry there's a siren <laughs> but yeah college was basically my 
going to BNCC was a great introduction into going into it just because I've learned a lot from there, met amazing people um, that have, you know, granted me opportunities to do things. So that's how I got into acting. So uh, at BNCC though, uh, did you actually apply to any other colleges around the CUNY, the City University of Publishing CUNY, it's on Alpha the City University uh, but it, so, because I know, yeah, sorry to interrupt, but I, because no, I know, because no, I know there are other, you know, uh, colleges, you know, at least community colleges that have, you know, their program, that sort of thing. Uh, Kingsboro, I know, had a good thing going for it when I was there as a student. So even though they don't really have a grasp as BMCC does, because BMCC has like a very good, very great grasp of what uh, theater is that sort of thing. Same with Book College too. And I'm, I'm not like too many on the horn, just saying, oh, you go to Book College, but but that, that's just in terms of my thing. So, what chose you to actually attending a BMCC, especially in terms of theater? Even though, like said, be... even though you said, even though you said, oh well, I want to be like accountant and then going into accounting. I was like, eh, you know, a lot of math. Yeah. Um. Uh, if we're going to be honest, it was just the location. <laughs> yeah. So my high school is not far from BMCC. I went to high school in Wall Street. Oh. Okay. Um, and it's funny because our high school always, like, if you went to BMCC or you were going to BMCC, you were looked down upon. We, they, they pretty much always spoke of BMCC as, like, the 13th grade of mm. our high school because that's where a lot of people go, which was pretty shitty because um, – despite my, there are some things about BMCC that I don't like, but that's like pretty much with anything in life. Yeah. Uh, I really liked BMCC. I really found a great connection with BMCC and just people that I've befriended or just the professors that I've had. Um, so I'm glad that I went there. Uh, the only other place that I remember applying to and got accepted to was LaGuardia. Which was all the way in Queens, so yeah, nah. Um, I, it, and I've been in two Laguardia, well, and Laguardia is a nice place. That's a long, long travel. Even for me, but it's not a commute from Brooklyn to Queens. I mean, I, I live on the D train only, so just that's literally just taking two trains to and from uh, to Manhattan and taking the six train. I believe, yeah, the six train to Laguardia, Long Island. City, yeah. and, then, and, and then especially just taking classes that could have been like maybe even like 50 minutes or maybe even mm -hmm. for an hour or something like that. But that, that's the thing about that's the thing about uh, BMCC too was location wise. Tribeca is a gorgeous, gorgeous location to be on you know, a community college uh, like facility. Mm -hmm. uh, Kingsboro has a very gorgeous location because it's right by the sea and it's like literally quiet yeah. unless you're like, unless it's like after three o'clock and all the freaking children come out or go straight <laughs> into. You know, and that was another thing at BMCC was that there are so many other schools around that area. I mean, I would lose count to know how many schools that are around that area. I think I've counted like at least five that were around BMCC because there was like a two private schools that was Stuyvesant. And then there was probably two other schools that would like, because I remember there was an extra portion of BMCC that was always closed off because it was like, oh, do not enter. This is for like, you know, private area only, even though it looked like it's going into the school. So I yeah. and I, so I and but if you walked around the block, you were still going to BMCC. So it was like very very weird how essentially, even though it was on a very big, like practically like a mile of campus, I mean, I'm not sure if it was a mile of campus, but even though it was like more than a mile of campus, mm -hmm. there was all these other places that were around BMCC and. Yeah, but people do frown upon BMCC or at least community college in general because it's community college is not a four year college, you know. Oh, it's just an associate degree. Don't you know, call me until you call me once you get the um, uh, bachelor's. That's what sort of thing. So, yeah. And that feels like a lawless change for just to talk about, but yeah, it, it's, it, it's just one of those things about attending. It's just one of those things where you have to be, it's like you have. 
to attend a community college to understand why people do frown upon people who do work in community college, even though going to community college is a wonderful joyous occasion by itself. One, you, you, it's a two year program. Two, once you do transfer out and go to a four year college, that's two years gone already. That's essentially two years gone. So even if you go to a four year program, that's two years gone. So it's like, you're essentially just taking two years worth of community college, right? And then you're taking essentially two years worth of regular college. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, um, it's because that hasn't been my experience, sadly. Um, uh, I, yeah, I got into BNCC in 2013 and I'm technically still there. I have one class left and it's what, it's been seven years um, for own personal reasons. Um, but, um, I, I think I learned over time that education is just education. You can get it the fuck anywhere. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, and of course there, there's a difference in which, um, uh, how community colleges are run, uh, versus private schools or private, um, institutions. But no, I am not ashamed of that at all. <laughs> like, I, mean, I remember me and my partner had that conversation because I was speaking to him about something and he mentioned of where he went to school. He went to university um, in North Carolina of the Ar some shit, School of the Arts. Um, and com we were just talking within the subject of like, it doesn't necessarily, it does matter to a certain extent. There is a certain influence when it comes to schools that you have gone to or went to. Um, but I still know people that have had what would be considered a better education or, yeah. you know, in that manner, but, you know, still have a lot of work to do, have a lot of work to do. But then you have like people like Nyla that was in BNCC and now she was on the tour in Hamilton. Like it's at the end of the day, like, uh, I don't, I don't really look down upon, <laughs> um, yeah. I personally don't, and I don't think anyone should um where they get their education from of course it's great to strive in other places like i still want to go to another school um yeah. after bncc um but uh, sorry there was a fly <laughs> um, there's, there's, uh, I, there's literally a fly in my room too so it's like it's it's i don't know it, it, it's weird because you, you, oh there's fly in your room and there's a fly in my room too so i don't know if it's it's like a true trans dimensional fly it's just that's just flying into your room and flying out of my room. It's like, or it could just be there flies everywhere. Yes. <laughs> around the city. Um, but yeah, that's my perspective on it. Um, I'm not ashamed that I went to BNCC again. A lot of the shit that I've learned is from there. Yeah. A lot of the work that I've gotten even outside of BNCC, I would have not gone unless I was in BNCC. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah. Speaking of working at BNCC, how much of the education did did you feel actually helped you in your act? Because I've seen you act on stage and it's, it, it's really impressed because you have these emotions of just being on stage and being almost like a character on stage. And the thing about being to see, uh, the, because I transferred for, from, a, even though when I got to being to see, I should just be, Long ago, I should just came as came in as a fresh student, so I could actually, you know, essentially uh, come in with a fresh state of mind. But I'm not sure if you've done like character work, that sort of thing, where it's just like, oh, we will study like that sort of a character, where we essentially uh, build up a character because you know you're given a monologue and then build up a character from that monologue, that sort of thing. Because when you're playing a role on stage, it's like you're very emotionally invested in both on stage, but also as an actress. You're just very emotionally invested. Even if you need to cry, it looks like you're gonna cry on stage. Even though I don't think, even though I don't really remember you crying on stage, maybe a little bit, but you know. Uh, in terms of getting the education at BNCC, did you have any uh, professors which Mutually, we probably have the same professors. Yeah. Yeah, mutually, we all have the same professors. But did you have, did you have any professors who really gave you the best guidance that made you allow you to actually be that actress on stage? First off, thank you. I actually don't think I am as good as people tell me. <laughs> and 
and that sounds both arrogant and humbling at the same time. So, eh. um, thank you. Um, well. But in terms of professors, um, I think I took, I mean, I listened to all of them. I think that's, <laughs> each of them have their own way in um, instructing you what to do on stage. Um, so I, I took the bits and pieces of like, things, well, a majority of the things that they tell me, of course, I need to like actually intake, uh, but there are bits and pieces that have hit home for me or things that I feel like I do need to work on, or they made me look at certain things in different perspectives. Uh, but two of the professors would obviously be Papa Cheese and Key. Yeah. Um, just because, and also like the professors now at the MCC, I'm pretty sure are different. Uh, yeah. Just because I'm hearing about new professors and I'm like, who is this? Um, but definitely uh, Key and Papa Cheese. Uh, I remember with uh, Papa Cheese especially, there, he's just very, I feel like with some other teachers, the things that they instruct sometimes or when it comes to feedback is very, there's a filter there. Yeah. Um, whereas Papa Cheese is just like, there is not really much of a differentiation. He's just very blunt with it. Um, yep. and not in a way where it's discouraging. It's not, it's more, it's, it's helpful. It's, if anything that comes out of his mouth, it's kind of, you know, sounds harsh. It's for good intentions. It's with good intentions. Sorry. Um, so I'd say Papa Cheese. So I remember there was one time in class where I was performing my monologue. And uh, I think this is a monologue that I never performed in front in front of someone and you saw that. Um, and I, he the, took a good time out of the class to work on me and I was getting frustrated, but I needed that. I truly needed that. So I'd say Papa Cheese the most, but again, every, Every professor at PMCC has, has been dope as fuck. Um, yeah. And everything that I've learned from them. But yeah, Pops. Pops is the shit. Yeah. Uh, in, in terms of everyone else, though, uh, do you have like a... Because I, I think at PMCC, the amount of dedication the professors have, especially with, you know, students like like me and you and you know, practically you know, students who have, well, I'll just say that I have a great difficulty in learning how to like, not necessarily become a character, but just like a great difficulty in understanding the grasp of academy. There's a lot of great stuff in BFC where it's like, okay, they don't, they don't like with Papa G's, he will, uh, and, uh, and, also with Winstead too, and because Winstead is a character too, but he's mm. awesome. Winstead's also- I love Winstead, with all my heart. <laughs> but go on, sorry. But yeah, it's like, people like Win uh, with Papa Cheese, Winstead, uh, Dowling, uh, Dr. Huff, and many others, they will always be like, kinda, you know, they will always be critiquing of what I need to do become to be better, and then we use in that direction. I would always be a lot more better in terms of my acting because I would always be uh, like what you said before. It's like I don't see myself as a great actor, and I just see myself as just being oh, I, you know, I'm performing lines on stage, that sort of thing. But I don't see myself like really, really becoming that character until probably when it's showtime, that sort of thing. Cause that's a, that's another thing where it's like rehearsals that's what you know rehearsals leading into essentially a, a performance you know performance safe that i feel like that's always a different thing because you know rehearsals all that stuff you know mm -hmm. even when you're on stage and you're not inside a rehearsal room for like a few hours and you're actually on stage you're actually in costume you're actually holding props that's what you know, you, you know, uh, it's not a room enclosed. There's actually open air, that sort of thing. The theater it feels so nice and welcoming. You actually could, you know, pronounce words that you could feel like a lot more thing. 
so yeah, it, it's, I forgot what I was saying, but yeah, uh, it, it, I, I will say that though, the, the, the professors at BMCC and any other college really, especially with the CUNY uh, system, they treat and teach everyone with so good in their heart that they really aren't, uh, uh, really aren't, uh, yeah. They, they treat everyone with just like a heart and they really aren't, uh, uh, what's the term? Treated, I mean, they are treated right, but at the same time, I've seen students like other classmates or who just treat the you know, professors with like that, where a, a slew of arrogance about them. Oh, yeah. I, just because Professor X told me, you know, I need to do this doesn't mean I need to do this. That's what. Mm -hmm. Like, they, like, it, it's, it is what it is. But yeah. So, yeah, in, in terms of theater, I'm just glad that BMCC has a way of essentially sticking to your uh, education because I, as, as any, and as what you said before, education, no matter where you get from it, it could be education on the street, it could be education from your home, it could be education from your big band or something like that. Mm -hmm. Education where you get it would always stick by you, essentially. But yeah, mm -hmm. uh, in, in terms of your performing arts experience, was this stuff that at BMCC where you felt actually like, okay, I, I'm doing acting, but is there other stuff? Okay, this is a very odd segue, but how did you get into oh, poetry? Well. Huh? <laughs> I love <laughs> I love how forthright you were with it. Like, this is gonna, how'd you get into poetry? <laughs> um, I was like, I, I, I'm trying not to, <laughs> I was like, I'm thinking of the question. I, I'm trying to think of the of perfect segue. You're not, ah, screw the four. Screw the- uh, third, Okay, the this is your show, oh. man. <laughs> so how'd you get into poetry, okay. was it? So how'd you get into poetry? Yeah, yeah but yeah, uh, at BMCC, did you, because I know you're a very, a very good poetress, yeah, poetry. That's true. Poet. It was a word. Poet. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, at BMCC, were there other areas of performing arts where you kind of like started exploring? Like, I know you're a good poetry. Uh, I've heard I've heard your stuff, and it's very, it's like very very. I won't say like deep stuff, but it's <laughs> since, since I'm not really a poet guy, I'm like, it, it sounds deep to me, but in other people, are like, no. eh, that was fair, and that sort of thing. But at, BMCC, <laughs> uh, but at BMCC, did you strike anything that was like kind of like performing arts wise, like anything else that wasn't like acting but still performing arts? Um, so, uh, yes, I mean, I, yes and no. Like, I don't, so I think at, with everyone at, like when you're starting out in general when it comes to anything performative um it's oh it every other artist has another art outlet that they like to do yeah. you know so it's it's one of those things um i just think now that you have a community in which people who are actors actresses um have have other areas of artistry in their lives. That's something that you can bond with them. And, and then it kind of, that's, that's something that heightens yours. It's like, okay, I'm the only one. How I started poetry. Um, I used to write a lot of poetry when I was in middle school. I used to read a lot of stuff. Um, but uh, this, when was it? I want to say it was about, mm, I'm 12. 25 right gotcha so I want to say about six years ago um I went to an open mic in the Bronx I had a friend that was performing there and I saw him and I saw the other um performers and I was like oh my god oh, this is so inspiring um and I've always wanted to perform poetry so it was something that was like in my mind, but then I started writing again. And then uh, after seven o'clock, 
You remember it was seven o'clock, correct? Yes, I do. Yes. I thought you were, so, I, I thought you literally meant after seven o'clock time, but then you were no, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> the play Clovis's play. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I remember so, seven o'clock. Got it. So, um, who was it? Uh, Rebecca. Um, you know Rebecca, yeah. right? Yeah. Got it. So Rebecca and Clovis, specifically Rebecca, is affiliated with an open mic, uh, an open mic that they, that, where they, okay, wow, where they hold an open mic um, in a cafe shop in Queens, and Clovis goes there, and um, other people do, and so one day they invited me, um, and I saw both Rebecca, which Rebecca is an amazing fucking poet, <laughs> um, I, I always tell her that. And same thing with Clovis. Clovis is a great poet. And I had told them that, you know, I do write poetry, but I've never performed it. Always wanted to. So they encouraged me, encouraged me. And that's when I did. And then I did. I was like, yo, this feels great. Um, <laughs> and so I was like, ah, this is something that I like to do. Um, like, I, I genuinely enjoy it. Um, and then I started performing ever since. I started performing... Um, did I ever perform? I think I performed with the Bronx before. I don't remember. Um, y yes, I totally did. I performed in the Bronx with Dev um, before. Yeah. We like told each other, we were like, okay, we're gonna perform. We're gonna do something. <laughs> we have to like get some sort of confidence. So I performed with him. Uh, and then uh, when I did Bodega Nights, my castmate was, is a rapper and he's also a poet. So he introduced me to his community. Um, and it's the same thing in theater, like in the poetry yeah. community, a lot of people know each other. Um, yeah. So yeah, I've been doing it for a few years. I lack the discipline and constantly going to open mics um, just because I work a lot. Um, yeah. But, well, not anymore. <laughs> um, Thanks, yeah. Colby. <laughs> Thank you, Colby. Um, but yeah, that's, um, that's how I got into poetry. Uh, and it's also an outlet where, where I don't need to put pressure on myself. It's one of yeah. those artistries, um, aside from all the other art, art outlets that I have. I think poetry is the one that I don't feel that I need to put a lot of pressure on myself because I don't really have a set plan and where I want it to go. Um, yeah. I just want to meet people. I just want to meet other artists. I just want to write the shit that I do. And I just want to perform. That's it. Yeah, I think with something like poetry, it, it, it speaks to a different volume. And I've tried writing poetry, uh, especially since um, I've seen your work and also I've seen our friend Brandon's work, who is a great poet. And it's like Brandon Vaughn Pure. For, for, I'm, I'm for some. If oh, yeah. Brand, for, uh, okay. Brandon, it, Brandon, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, man. It's like. I'm kind of dyslexic on certain names, so if I see a name, I'm just like, I'm going to sound it out as Purell, but it's not Purell, but you know what I mean. But yeah, Brandon, Brandon's work as a poet, my God, it's like, you're kind of like taken on a trip with, like, there is a way of telling the story with poetry, but when you hear Brandon's poetry, it's like literally being taken on a trip from the first moment to the last moment. And it's like, it's, it's our, yeah, it's our expiring too. So. They also of, have the voice for it. Sorry. Yeah. On. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, Brandon's voice is like gaudy in terms of poetry they speak. So yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in terms of your poetry, like what strikes you as like, what, do you have like a certain background in terms of okay, uh, not like background like you know, this like this is the background I'm talking about and this poem that sort of thing. In terms of like how you create these poems, that sort of thing, like how is your background is like? Do you really have like background like this where you're just like okay, I'm just gonna be minimal for like a couple of hours, just clear my mind, meditate, usa, whatever, and just like here we go write down some poetry, that sort of thing. It's like, what is your like poetry uh, mindset or in terms of like creating like a first word to like a sense of that? 
Um, it comes at random. How I started off, um, I don't want to say started off. Uh, I do this thing. <laughs> I do this thing when I am upset or depressed or something. I just write a lot of stream of consciousness. That's how yeah. I started off writing with anything. Um, just write it all out. Sometimes I'll go back to it and see if I find little gems and create off of there. Yeah. Um, but I honestly, those are, it's, it's not even environmental or like what my surroundings are. It'll be like a urge. It'll be a quick urge it'll be like this is a good idea or more or less it, it'll be like one line write it down um so i can save it for later um because i'll remember what it is that i wanted to write about um yeah a lot of it depends on my on the mood i base my mood on a lot of things but also that can be bad because a lot of my first draft uh pieces I st they still remain as first draft when I need to, in my just opinion, go continue back to the like... second one. Yeah. Um, yes. I have, I've been doing it a little bit in quarantine, but also <laughs> I have not. I, during quarantine, I've just been having like the biggest artistry, like artist block. I don't know what it is, but, um, yeah. but yeah, I, there are times I where I I'll sit I, myself down. I generally sorry, feel the same. No, sorry. I generally feel the same thing where it's like during quarantine, like I should be very creative. And then it's like, there's like this writer's block or something, even though there mm -hmm. shouldn't be. But yeah, go ahead. Um, sometimes I'll definitely plan when I want to write, but, and I think that's mainly for revision when it, but when it comes to, if I, if, when it, when it comes to actually just writing it out, I'm just, if I have an idea, I want to go with it. I try not to make it as like there's supposed to be a guideline. Like it's this yeah. like if I were to first write it out, this is what the poem is gonna be. Um it's more or less like if I write a poem or at least a line and then it like just transforms into a stream of consciousness midway, then I'm okay yeah. with that. So in terms yeah, of so. your Yeah, so in terms of background, you do you do have like a background ish quality where it's like you have like a preparation. Like, when you do write poetry, it's not like a set mind stone. It's like essentially like a stream of consciousness that essentially evolved into a poem. Uh, do you follow the, like the poetry like notions of like I guess the, the, I guess poetry beats, where it's like you follow like a, like the rhythm of a poet, uh, like a, like the rhythm, yeah, the rhythm of a poem, where it's like you know blah 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 boom blah 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 boom. Uh, oh, like, like I am a pink tameter and stuff like that, or yeah, yeah, it's like, uh, no, I always wanted to try it, uh, just because uh, the uh, open mic that I used to go to, go to the way they uh set their um their sessions up, it, it would be like the first 10 perform, like you know, the first 10 people that to arrive there have reserved their spots for poetry or whatever they want to do, yeah, um. Then you have the feature of that night. So it's usually like one performer that has like a good hour to perform what they want. And then you have the live jazz um, uh, spoken word, which is basically anyone can get in line. Um, and you have the jazz band in the back, just like just jamming out. Uh, any person, the people in line just come up, perform what they want. It can be very small, it can be very big, it's up to you. Um, and I always thought that was going to be tricky, but I did it once and I was like, oh, I like this. <laughs> um, but not necessarily. I think a lot of poets have um, their own beat to how they, they write. Form. Yeah. Yeah. Or how they write. Um, I'm still trying to figure out, not trying to figure out what mine is, but it, it kind of, it's different within every poem I believe but yeah wow the sun is shining uh, I know um, I was about to say you know you, you have a great little uh a great little uh, uh what's the term halo, a great little halo of just right above you and just like you're kind of like very <laughs> you're very angelic right now so I, I didn't want to like I didn't want to like 
I didn't like literally once. Like, hey, uh, uh, Jessica, you're kind of like an angel right now. So, like literally, it was like. <laughs> but yeah, uh, in terms uh, with poetry, do you feel like that is a lot more? Because I know with the performing arts, especially in theater, poetry and playwriting, that's that's almost like, hand, that goes like almost hand in hand, because like once you start writing, especially as, uh, especially as an actor, you know, it's like, oh, it's like, uh, like with Deb Stein, when he was talking about, you know, his, his thing, it's like, oh, talk about, oh, how he would, you know, work, you know write stuff in between uh, his, in between his uh, uh, acting stuff, like asking classes, or right between his like lyric stuff, like that. Mm -hmm. uh, do you see like acting? Well, not necessarily acting, but you do you see theater like almost like opening doors to other ways of performing arts because theater is always going to be a theatrical world you know you can't it, there's no ifs ands or but uh, you know, ifs and you know buts about it you know theater is going to be like theater it's like an actor's got to be on stage the stage hands got to be in the back trying not to cry because someone is not if someone is talking very loudly or not sharply you know stage mm -hmm. managers not trying to pull their hair out you know that's what we're so well the stage manager is going to go nuclear on someone for talking last loud as the actor is on stage yeah, yeah. Uh, do you see performing arts, especially in the theater, as a gateway into doing other performing arts? Because I know, <coughs> sorry about that. Do you use, like, especially with theater, like with at BMCC, one of the required classes was a playwriting. So, did you like? I'm not sure if you you have one set of uh, playwriting. Right. Or did you, oh yes, the fuck I did. Okay. <laughs> I love him. Uh, did you, when you were taking Winstead's playwriting class, did that actually help you in terms of like writing more better? Because not generally as a playwright, uh, you know, playwright, but also just generally with uh, because I know you're talking about the stream of consciousness with poetry. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is, does theater really open doors to like other? Uh, like oh, to open doors to other performing arts, like a sense of like, poetry. That's what I'm I think, in a sense, it can. I think theater is one of the most multifaceted. Um, how would I say this? I guess genre in yeah. art, just because it, there's. It, People are people within there are not strangers to having more than one outlet. Yeah. Um, example: When you see when you go see musical theater, you see someone there that's like dancing their ass off while at the same time singing, while at the same time yeah. acting. Um, so which is no hard by itself. Which, yeah, which is hard by itself. But there are people who are yeah. like extremely talented who could belt out a song, but at the same time not be so out of breath afterwards. And also the dancing choreograph, all that stuff. It's like, and of course, I don't really see a lot of musicals because you know, music, I'm not really a musical person because that's, I, no. I love I love musicals, but I just don't see musicals a lot because you know it's practically a three hour. Uh, you, you practically have to sit. In, you practically have to sit down for three hours watching people like sing and dance. No, so it's 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 understandable. We're going. It's, it's like it's one of those. Okay, I love to see these musicals, but at the same time, it's like I gotta like maybe maybe once like maybe a musical once a month or something. Like that. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's a, that's an odd way of saying, it, but uh, yeah, uh, it does gain, especially with theater, it does gain different outlets to yeah to do because especially if you're. Uh, especially if you're doing the behind the scenes stuff, it does actually help you to, like with sound. Like I've had sound practicum and I had production practicum and that helps me a lot in terms of being both a production stage and, but also editing, you know, doing this show, you know, I've had work with uh, Audacity, the, the, the program, not 
not the audacity of some, but there's a program called Audacity. Uh, it helps you um, audio. So. I remember. I took. I took. Did you have uh, Piper? Yeah. Yeah. Piper. I I love him so much. Uh, yeah. Which was another thing. Um, uh, sound production. Uh, I'm I. People can easily get inspired to like start producing music just off that class. Like it was fun. Yeah. As well. Like I loved that class. It was one yeah. of my favorites by far. I, I, I forgot who it was, but in that class there was this, another person who was there who was literally with himself, just like creating beats and beats with like a uh, with the, the audio systems around, and he would be like, you know, yeah. like creating beats all that stuff and hyper. You'd be like, yeah, man, just keep doing that. And he's like, and and then he'd be like, okay, here's what the uh, thing is with the that. Because Pepper is a, I have to get Pepper on uh, on the pocket too, because I know as a music, I know with him as a musician, he has a lot of great uh, expertise. That's one thing. And also, I'm trying to get key too. So it's like I'm trying, I'm trying not to, I'm trying, I'm being hopeful for all this stuff. But for season three, yes, for season three, I'm gonna go go big and go home. So anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, so I think we talked a lot, a lot about poetry, at, at least in my eyes, because I'm just, again, <laughs> it, it, you spoke a lot about poetry, and I, I think it gets a lot into the thing, and then again, I'm not really a big poet person, so yeah. Uh, now, you mentioned the Bronx before, and you mentioned, well, yeah, back to poetry, but yeah, in, in terms of the Bronx, how well is the performing scene, the, the performance scene there? Because I know Bronxites, Bronxites, uh, Bronx I, I have Bronx no idea. Natives. The Bronx natives, the actual New York natives. Uh, that's not, that's not a, a thing about us New Yorkers. <laughs> but, but if you actually look at the map of New York, the, like the Bronx is literally the last part of actual New York. Mm -hmm. But that, but that's a different story. But uh, we are all islands. So <laughs> but in terms of the performance artists, or the performing arts in the Bronx, how is it there? Because I would, because when you think about performing arts in New York City, you think of, of you know Manhattan or Brooklyn. Well, mostly just Manhattan. Like when you think of performing arts in, in New York City, it's Manhattan. But in Brooklyn, it is like. It's mostly probably downtown, like maybe, uh, I was about to say Wall Street, uh, Williamsburg, Bushwick, around that area, in terms of downtown Brooklyn. Queens is, I don't know much about Queens, but I've seen like where the Queens-ish areas are. Uh, but, and Staten Island, I've t and I've already had guests on the show who actually are from Staten Island, the pressure probably is, and this is, you know, Again, go support all these artists who I've mentioned in the, in the past, too. So, yeah. Uh, in terms of the Bronx performing arts scene, how is it around that area? Because I know I've, like, some of my best friends are from the Bronx, you know, Epstein. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure you know who she is, but Rachel Navarro. Uh, I'm pretty, well, I'm not sure. But no, yeah, yeah and, Rachel and, uh, A couple of other people who I know are from the Bronx is, like, how is it performing up in, in the Bronx? Because I know there's Lehman College. I know there is Fordham University, but I don't know if Fordham University has a theater program because I know it's an actual university, so it's, like, it's not part of like the, uh, the CUNY system. So yeah, um, it's like, how is it for, uh, like, because I know the Bronx is like a very, very big borough by itself. Because I've seen a map and I was like, where does it start and where does it end? That, that sort of thing. It's like mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Uh, it, but yeah, generally performing in the Bronx. Like, what is your experience in performing in the Bronx? Um, well, the only thing I've ever performed in the Bronx is poetry. Oh. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't go to Lehman or Fordham or anything. Um, so in terms of like performing arts in that sense, it's mainly just poetry. It, it's very raw. It's very not that it feels different, but it's for me i it can be can be intimidating but that's based on my own personal experience not personal experiences just my own personal thoughts um but it's very raw it, it truly truly is um 
there's some amazing poets out there that are from the Bronx and perform there that are just, mm. they're just fucking rad. <laughs> um, I'd say that, yeah, but that's the number one word I'd say I would use is raw. It's very raw in comparison to the other places that I've ever performed in. Um, but yeah. Uh, it's, you, um, yeah. In terms of the other performing arts, uh, uh, I, I will say, like, actual, uh, I, will, that's like, I, I will say in terms of performing artists from the Bronx, uh, like, actors, actresses who are Bronx natives, that sort of thing, uh, do you feel like those who actually are from the Bronx have, like, carry a lot more weight into their acting, that sort of thing, or in their professional performing work? Because um, you mentioned, because I... you mentioned. Because you mentioned that people who are from Bronx, or at least in the, in, in the poetry eyes, it's a lot more broader and that sort of thing. Uh, and, I've, and I know for a fact those who are from the Bronx carry a lot more of a broader sense of just acting, where it's like they have a lot more clearer sense of like what acting is. Yeah. So in terms of the actors who you know from the Bronx, like famous actors, that sort of thing, or actresses, that sort of thing, do you get the sense that the Bronx does carry a bit of truth to it, or is it just like a, like a, a general truth that's like, oh, we're performing in the Bronx, there's a, like a lot more, it's just the atmosphere? Um, well, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, anyone in any form can be as, authentic as they'd like to be definitely I don't feel that it really relies on location but um, based on history based on knowing how the borough is itself it yeah there's a lot of people there that that have like, that have a certain depth to them that they bring in any of their artistry not only just acting example dev brings it into his music. Same thing with Vanya, brings it into her music and their music. Um, you know, it, it's, um, what was I going to say? <laughs> I think, again, I feel like no one is incapable of bringing such authenticity to their artistry. Um, I think definitely people in the Bronx do. Um, but again, that is, that's, that's such a generalization that I personally yeah. can't make. I personally think with my poetry, with the poetry that I've been to in my comparison is just because I am from the Bronx. So it felt, it felt more like home. It felt more raw to me. Um, probably someone from Brooklyn can think otherwise. Someone from Queens maybe think otherwise, or they can agree. It's up to them. Um, but, and I'm not trying to make this sound as diplomatic as possible. It's just, nah, nah. you know, I know, I know what borough I come from and I know the people there and I've met some of the most amazing talents there, but there's also me, I mean, another, other amazing talents I've met from other places. But to me, the Bronx will always be a sense of rawness there as much, as much as it's trying to get gentrified. Um, which is a whole other, sense of rawness there. Which is a whole other conversation, right? So. Yeah. Why would you gentrify the book? Just leave it as it is. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, now speaking of the Bronx, so you starred in a web series called Bodega Nights, and although Bodega Nights, I believe, was supposed to be sent in Brooklyn because it, it's odd because some of the locations from the episodes would be like very Brooklyn esque uh, titles, and then I'd be like, wait a minute. I don't know all these places in Brooklyn. This doesn't feel like Brooklyn. And then they were like, oh, this, you know, it, it, because it, it, it felt like, oh, it feels like it's somewhere in Queens, maybe in the Bronx somewhere. Was, but yeah, in, in terms of Bodega Nights, how did that come about? I'm going to answer your question one. It was only in Brooklyn. Oh, okay. It was no, nowhere in Queens. This was um, East New York. So oh, okay. yeah, that's why. That's probably why. Um, the, one so part, the, one, the one part of Brooklyn that I don't go to because it's too far away. It's like literally too far away. It, yo, the commute there was lovely. <laughs> um, 
So how about yeah, getting that started? Yeah. Um, so the, the co-director, uh, his name is Miguel Ortiz. Uh, I love him. He's amazing. He, um, I met him uh, because he needed uh, someone for a small like series he did called Chapters of Us. Um, and that's where I met him. And we hit it off ever since. And then there was one day I was in Barnes and Noble. I think this was either early last year or probably late year of December. I don't remember. Um, fuck, I don't remember. But it, I think it was. It, I think it was 2019, early, early 2019. Um, so, um, shit. Okay, sorry. Now I'm like, no, was it? <laughs> but I saw him, I bumped into him in Barnes and Nobles and I was like thinking about him. I was like, oh my God, where have you been, bro? Um, and then he told me, he was like, dude, honestly, I have a show uh, that I want you to be in. And I'm like, what? Really? <laughs> and so he had told me that he wrote uh the character just around me as you can tell there is very similar similarities that we have yes um, but yeah yeah so i felt like i was playing myself but in a different sense um yeah, yeah he wrote that around me and you know later on it started to be developed and then in the summer i think early summer that's when we started having our meetings um and then we shot Bodega Nights in late August and early and pretty much throughout September. Um, so that's how that came about. So I didn't really, I didn't have to audition. He just wrote the character and was like, I know you can play this bitch. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's me. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's how Bodega Nights came about. Um, yeah. Now, <laughs> uh, I know Bodega Nights just recently got uh, nominated for a uh, I'm trying to remember it's what it's called. It's a competition. Yeah, competition. Yeah. Uh, when you heard that news, were you like at all surprised? Because did you figure, oh, but Vega Nights, it'd be like, it'd be like a small web series, that sort of thing, that, that, you know, on like Instagram, that sort of thing. Because when I, I would always be like the hype man for you. It was like, hey, you know, if you're, it's Tuesday you night. Are, I know, I'm a good hype man too. You are, I appreciate you so fucking much. Like, Thank you. You were on it every week. I love it. I love it. I love it. I was like, hey, um, yeah, it's, it's only 10 minutes, so if you need something to watch. <laughs> but yeah, I, I was um, surprised to actually see it like be nominated for it. So I was like, oh, yeah. It was like, it's, a, it's, it's on Instagram. It's very uh, uh, widely attainable to watch, that sort of thing. So, and I wasn't sure like how web series would be announcing that sort of thing, but seeing that web series be nominated, it was like, it made me smile because, you know, it's like stuff, because, uh -huh. and th there is a lot of underground, well, not underground, but there's a lot of new filmmakers, especially coming out of New York City, who are getting their start on like literally like this. Not like this, but like on online, like their work online is starting to become a lot more precedent and actually getting a lot more noticeable. And so, yeah, uh, when you heard about the news about it being nominated, like, what did you say? It was like, oh man, is this like, it's like, is that it's like, were you were you like, for is this for real nominated? It's like, it's like, like, uh, so. like, were you shocked? Were you like presently surprised? I was so I was confused because <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh Miguel had told me he was like uh that I was asking about season two yeah he started writing it and stuff and he was like for right now that he's just applying for grants so we can get a better budget so yeah. you know next time it'd be you know much more I, 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 what in whatever way it'll you know benefit the, the the series then yeah but um he had told me that we got into uh miami's urban film festival uh so that's when i was like oh my god yes i was like happy like anything that we're in that was happy um 
and then I saw I didn't even get an announcement necessarily for that people just started posting it and then I started I got tagged in it and I was confused I was like wait what wait what I'm going <laughs> and I was like wait, what is this you know wait, I'm, going, I'm going to Miami wait what <laughs> Um, no, it was for the HBO one. That's the one oh. I got confused in because I was like, oh. I thought we got into the Urban Miami Festival. Um, so when I saw that, I was like, what the fuck? And I was so hesitant to put it up that we got nominated because I knew as soon as people saw HBO, that's what they were going to correlate it to. Not correlate it, but that's what they, I think they were going to make it a bigger deal than it actually was. Um, yeah. Not saying that getting nominated for that is not a big deal. Cause it, no, I, I no. mean, it's it's accomplishment. But um, oh, yeah. <laughs> but no, I was just as after I got less, you know, I was not as bewildered. Um, I was so fucking happy. I was like, I love my team. I love y'all yeah. so much. I love y'all. You guys are amazing. And yeah, um, I just can't wait to know what season two is. Yeah, especially uh, because of what's happened with uh, uh, anti Morna, but yeah, uh, if, if that's the term anti Morna, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know right now. But yeah, mm-hmm. Corona really has put a, a kibosh on a lot of plumbing, especially, you know, not only with performing arts, but just like, a, like performing arts in, in Brooklyn. Yeah. Performing arts in New York City, it's literally just on pause, and we don't know when it's going to return, so if this happens to be for the next, like, couple of months, then yes, we'll just make do with whatever, but yeah. Uh, uh, But I do love that stuff that you worked on is actually still getting appreciated, and they're in HBO, uh, because I know HBO, I'm not sure if HBO still does this, but they used to do a show called Real Shorts, I think, or maybe on P, uh, uh, PBS, I don't remember. But they used to do a show called Real Sh- uh, Shorts, and they would actually actually show stuff that were made by people, that sort of thing, and maybe like 15 minutes, that sort of thing. So if, I, if, like, if I'm passing through HBO one day and I see Real Shorts on, and I see, oh, oh, it's an episode of the Knights, let me just see this for a second. <laughs> and, and it's like, and that allows you to actually, it's like, hey, you know, it's, even though this thing's like 10 minutes long and it's on HBO, it's like, you can still watch it elsewhere. It's like, but yeah, it gets you recon- not only res- recognition, but also it's like a, a way of your t- like the team that created a thing, a, a way to be uh, appreciated for the, for their hard work that they put in for essentially for. Mm-hmm. A very hot summer, I will say. Uh, like the summer of 2019 was like scorching hot, and it was hot. Thank God it was like turning into fall though when we were filming. So I was yeah. really happy about that. And I, I love the fact that you shot at night too, or well, while filming at night too, because filming at night always gives a nice little, uh, very uh, neo neo noir type of like look about New York City, especially when the, it's like, especially if you're walking down a block and there's no lights out i mean there's no lights but there is a light like down the block but it's kind of like block because of the trees and whatnot because my blocks will be like very well will essentially be like that because you know i'll be walking home one night and then i'll be like oh it's a very dark block but there's a full light at the, at the like in the block but it's being blocked was the tree lights so yeah mm-hmm. but yeah when you're filming at night in new york city it's almost like a very neo-noir type of type of yeah we would, stay, we would stay up like i remember there was one where we it was 4 a.m really you know once i and that was like i we sh, we started shooting around 12 a.m no sorry 12 p.m so 12 in the afternoon all the way down to like 4 a.m and of course we had breaks like they like again they had like a set group that was like really dope so we got we yeah. got fed, we had breaks. Yeah, but again, we're all hungry for some sort of success or some sort of, you know, satisfaction with our artistry. So we we're like, fuck, I don't yeah. mind. But I definitely uh, wanted to go home. I was tired. <laughs> yeah, especially it's a, it's a long commute back to uh, back to the Bronx from East New York. I would imagine so, especially uh, 
coming home after like four or five o'clock in the morning, or at least, you know, with a car and whatnot. So I'm not sure if that was a luxury. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I, I do want to ask you something in, in terms of the Bodega Nights. Uh, th there were scenes where it actually took place in the Bodega, hence the name Bodega Nights. And, and so, yeah. From your perspective, like, how was it shooting inside an actual bodega for, like, the amount of times you did? Because I know you, like, characters of, you, like, both your character and the other and the other main character, he would be like, oh, you're visiting bodegas, that sort of thing. Uh, how many bodegas, like, do you remember offhand, like, how many bodegas you were able to shoot in? Or is it just, like, one bodega that you were able to film, like, two of them? Wow. Yeah. Uh, you want to know a funny story? Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, the second episode where Jess robs the bodega. Yeah. Right? Um, we spoke to the person at the counter. I guess he was the one that owns the place. Uh, yeah. To be the actor in it. So, the guy who I am robbing is actually the bodega. Like, he's the bodega man. Um, it was so funny. And he was adorable. I loved him. <laughs> but... I had a gun, obviously, and it looked yeah. real. And so we kept telling people, there there are some people outside that kept trying to enter the bodega, but we couldn't, they, they were, well, yeah, they couldn't, we were telling them like we're shooting something. Someone oh, yeah. realized what was going on, saw, and they can only see with a certain perspective. They don't see the camera. They only see me with a fucking mask, dressed in black, shooting a gun. Someone calling the cops on us. And oh my God. In they came, and my one of my, uh, I guess it's Adam. Yeah, I think it was one of the producers. He was like, he like grabs a gun. He's like, oh, give me, give me, give me. And he just hides it in the bread, um, <laughs> and <laughs> and the police officer come in laughing. They're like, hey, we heard we got a call that someone in a mask with a gun is terrorizing. Uh, in, in the bodega and I'm like that'd be me sir we're shooting me. and it's just like you see this big ass camera does everyone not see this huge ass camera like what the fuck you know um, so yeah no we only shot in two bodegas it was um, yeah we only shot in two and they were dope about it the guy the people there yeah because um, I, I, I wanted to know like especially as an actor just like Filming in uh, filming on location, especially if it isn't like a fixed location, like a set location, where it's like, oh, it's something that we build on the set. But filming on location inside an actual authentic bodega is like, you know, you could. It's like one of those. It, and it literally looked like a place that you've probably been to like so many other times. <coughs> Excuse me. So many other times, and you'd be like. And here's your character literally having to rob a place, and it's like, you know, here's your gun, all that stuff. And it's only like maybe like a minute or two, or excuse me, like maybe a minute or two, maybe even 90 seconds. I forgot how long it is, but it's usually about like seven minutes. Yeah, but, uh, but I'm talking about like the scene itself, where it's like, oh, oh the scene itself. Sorry, yeah, no, it's it's it. Okay, yeah, it for how. <sighs> seeing the final product and how many in, in versus how many times I had to do that fucking scene and spend time at that bodega is, is vastly different. It is different. Yeah. Uh, but, oh, and I, I think this is a good question to end on, but do you see like more online multimedia becoming a lot more popular now because of what's been happening? Do you see people do, like uh, because creating like maybe a seven to like eight minute web series that's that goes on for like maybe 10 episodes or something like that. Do you see as that as a good way to not only promote yourself but also just being hey, you know, even though this is not the not the future to be had in mind of what was been happening, but hey, it's gonna be a nice little. It's a nice little uh, prospect of what to do. Because I know for a fact that Zoom plays are, you know, Zoom plays uh, or Zoom, that sort of thing, you know, it could only go for as long as it can until the theaters are back open. Well, 
but do you see essentially online multimedia, i.e. like web shorts out filmed around this time, do you see it continuing on even after, you know, production has been on pause in New York City and just like, okay, people could actually start filming again. And people have been starting filming again, I know, one of my, uh, one of my guests. People have been filming throughout quarantine. I hope yeah. You know yeah, I know. Um, I think it'll be a little bit of both. I think there will be, like, there has to be some sort of precaution to take with, you know, the pandemic, even if it is safe to come outside again. And if there is a vaccine that were to come about, people are still going to be very skeptical about it. not, oh, I want to say skeptical, but more, they take more, much more precaution, you know? Yeah. But there's still people, like, uh, I had two auditions. I didn't do it I because I forgot. <laughs> I had two auditions where they actually were going to film something um, during this pandemic, and it was in June. Um, yeah. June, July. Um, so, yeah. Um, I, I think it'll be a little bit of both, but I think everyone should, everyone is still going to take some sort of precaution with everything. I think that people are that are doing things within the realm of their home and doing things virtually, I give them props. Um, You have to get your creative juices flowing and getting your artistry out there somehow. Um, But yeah, I I, I see this going for a little bit, but after when there is a sense of normalcy or what what was our perception of normalcy, um, then it'll go back to being what it was, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I and I know for a fact that actors or just performing artists in general need to be in a room with another artist just to be creative because you mm-hmm. have to feed off of off of that energy. If you aren't feeding off that energy, then you're just like you're literally just on your phone, just like like yeah. And it's kind of heartbreaking because you know I I. There are ideas I want to do, but I can't do it because of what you know what's happening right now. I, like, I, I want to produce another play of mine, but I can't do that because there are no theaters to do that. I might do it virtually, but in order to do it virtually, I need to work out great schedules in advance, that sort of thing. And it would only probably be like maybe one day where all these people would call it in, and then I'll be releasing it on YouTube or something like that. And then, but yeah, it, it's. There is a great difficulty in terms of what's happening because of what's happened, especially what's happened with COVID. But I do hope that by the end of the year, there should be something workable. Because I can't see myself, yeah, because I can't see myself just like waiting another year for everything to go back to 2022, where it's just like, ah, you know, it's 2020, it's 2022, and, and it, there's nothing really of that, like kind of like normalcy anywhere. So yeah, it's it, it, just to put, put my thought into process. It is what it is, and we can't really. We, I wasn't we too upset um, with everything shutting down necessarily. Um, yeah. You no, know, there was a play that I was directing with James at the MCC and other people had shows and I know it was heartbreaking yeah. but you know with certain situations like this it's like we just have to nip it in the bud um, yeah. you know and prep for another year or prep for another time yeah. um, so it is what it is and on that note, I think this is a good way to end the episode. Season one of, I mean, oh my God, I said season one. <laughs> it's okay. It's your show. Hey. I have been doing this for, I took a break from filming for the past few weeks just to catch up on not only Avatar, but you know, stuff like that. But And uh, blah, blah, blah. this has been season three. Oh, crap. I forgot my last important uh, things. Uh, Go for it. So I have three questions that's quite easy, or a couple of questions that's quite easy. One, do you have any advice to the actors or performers that's watching or listening right now? Continue, well, continue working on your craft by yourself, whether if that's reading monologues, if that's working on resonance in your voice, working on physicality, just 
there are so many things that you can do and prep for, even though you're not doing anything right now, doesn't necessarily mean you have to stop everything altogether. And I'm pretty, and the thing about you, and I do have to question is like, and do you want to have any social media you want to plug? But every now and then, it's like kind of hard to find you on social media because you do take that social media break just to be on the safe side. Because I, I, I do, I do say, and I do agree with this. It's like every now and then you do need a social media break because it's like you're not focused on social media. But when you are on social media, where can we find you? You can find me. <laughs> On Instagram, uh, my Instagram handle is Dioza Dioz X. Um, so D I O Z A D I O S X. There you go. And just my Facebook, if you want to see. Well, on both on both social media platforms, I just speak a lot about things that are political um, and about being gay. Uh, um, so <laughs> nope. it's Jessica, it's Jessica Cruz, Jessica K Cruz. That's there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and uh, I would say, my last question would be, uh, do you have any other projects to working in the future? But yeah, do you have any projects in the future that we'll probably be hoping Yes, for? I actually oh, okay. do. <laughs> okay. Um, I am working on a play that will be in October. So oh, doing, yeah, they're doing it very interestingly. So instead of it being like a Zoom call, they're actually going to send out camera equipment so we can do it live and they're going to broadcast it um, or just, you know, yeah, stream it. Um, that sounds interesting. And I can't wait. Gaston can't wait. is my scene partner. Hmm. Yeah. So. October might be the time when this thing is actually out. So it might be perfect timing. Um, but yeah, there's that. Um, my, uh, I, and in terms of poetry, I have, uh, I, I got accepted into a mental health uh, anthology. Uh, is this poet? Is this poet? Um, she's dope as fuck, and she was having some sort of like, I don't want to say audition, but you know, to submit your work uh, in yeah. reference to moments. So I have a poem that I wrote. It's actually one of the first poems I performed at um queens in nice um and i just revised it i definitely revised a lot of it um oh, i got yes. advice from a friend who's a published poet and he was like i think you should tweak this room and so i did and then i submitted it to them and i'm excited for that but yeah nonetheless that's that's about it I'm just so yeah it. <laughs> yeah uh i think in the terms of everything else, we do have to go back to normal and going back to normal, even in this quarantine time, where it's just like, uh, there's limited options. Even with those limited options, you need to keep moving forward. But that has been episode one of season three, not season one, as I said before. Uh, it's been a while since I recorded. Uh, yeah, I hope. Everything has been good to those who have been watching or listening or both, you know. I have always been Brian M. Davis, your friendly neighborhood host. This has been yes. Jessica. This has been Jessica Cruz, uh, your friendly neighborhood uh, poetress, actress, performing artist, slash philosopher. <laughs> Am I a philosopher? I hope not. <laughs> but yeah, I hope... Anytime. And you're just a great person to talk with. Uh, we could just talk to hours, but I, I don't want to get people to be like, eh, you know, this is close to almost 90 minutes, Brian. You got to pack it up, pack your shit up. But anyway, anyway, I hope you had a great time listening or just watching. So, yes, just stay safe and please wear your damn mask.